Have you ever stared into the mirror and asked yourself, huh, how do my eyes work? And why are they that color? Well, you're in luck because we're going to be discussing the anatomy and physiology of the eye, including why our eyes are the color that they are. Looking at the eye, we can see a white part and a non-white part. The white part is called the sclera, and it shapes and protects the eye. It's also a place onto which muscles of the eye can attach. The non-white part of the eye is where the cornea is. An interesting fact about the cornea, the immune system can't reach it because it has no blood vessels, so it's the only part of the body that can be transplanted with low rejection risk. It also houses a bunch of pain receptors, which is why some people can't wear contact lenses. The cornea is transparent, so light can pass through it and get to the parts of the eye it needs to get to so we can see. Interestingly, it's also responsible for most of the focusing of light. Behind the cornea lies the iris and the pupil. The iris is the colored part of the eye, and it has two layers of smooth muscle, the circular and radial muscles. The circular muscles are in charge of contracting the pupil, which is the opening in the eye through which light enters. The radial muscles are in charge of dilating the pupil. Pupil contraction and dilation occur due to many things, including changes in lighting conditions and mental state. To see more structures, we have to look at a sagittal section of the eye, or in other words, we have to look at the eye as if it was cut vertically down the middle. We can now see the choroid, a membrane filled with blood vessels that sustain all the layers of the eye. It's brown due to melanin produced by melanocytes, which might sound familiar if you've watched my video on the skin and why we have palm lines. Its brown color allows it to absorb light. This is important since we need controlled rays of light to form good images. If light was allowed to bounce all over the place in the eye, we wouldn't be able to see properly. Towards the front of the eye, the choroid morphs into the ciliary body, which houses the ciliary muscles. These are the muscles that determine the shape of the lens. The lens is so cool. The lenses of the eye work a lot like the lenses you might find on your glasses, operating on the same physics principles of light refraction, but they're dynamic and able to change shape depending on how far away the thing you're looking at is. And they do this automatically. While the cornea does most of the focusing of light, the lens is responsible for fine-tuning this process and converging the light that comes into your eye onto the retina, which is crucially important for proper vision. In fact, myopia and hyperopia, also known as nearsightedness and farsightedness respectively, are caused by light converging improperly, either in front of or behind the retina, due to an irregular eye shape. In myopia, the eye is too long and the light converges in front of the retina. Conversely, in hyperopia, the eye is too short, and light converges behind the retina. Glasses work by bending light so that it converges properly at the retina. The retina contains a bunch of photoreceptors, which are responsible for converting the light information into electrical signals that are then processed into images in the brain. We have two types of photoreceptors, rods and cones. Rods help us see in low light conditions, while cones help us see in high light conditions. Cones also give us the ability to perceive color. The retina has two layers, the pigmented layer and the neural layer. To keep this video short, I'm going to gloss over their specific functions, but I do want to mention them because they're involved in a condition called retinal detachment, which is when the two retinal layers separate. Between the retina and the lens, the eye is filled with a gel-like substance called vitreous humor, which pushes on these two layers and keeps them from separating. But if, for example, we experience head trauma, like someone whacks us really hard with a baseball bat, the layers can detach from one another. This damages photoreceptors and can lead to blindness, but if it's caught early enough, it's possible to reattach the layers. On top of protecting against retinal detachment, vitreous humor also supports the lens and ensures that our eyes don't collapse in on themselves. Okay, now that we understand how the eye works, let's revisit the second question from the beginning of the video. Why are they that color? Like mentioned before, the iris is the colored portion of the eye, and the pigment that gives the iris its color is, drum roll please? melanin. And now you might be wondering, hold on, how can a brown pigment result in blue eyes? Well, when our irises have a lot of melanin, our eyes look brown or black. But when our irises have small amounts of melanin concentrated in the back, the unpigmented parts of the iris end up giving the eye a blue, green, or gray color. In fact, the iris pigment of most newborns is underdeveloped, so they tend to have gray or blue eyes. 